This is just a little follow up to the the thing I did about the um the movie Inception. Because basically what, what that illustrated was <laughs> kind of this almost hopeless notion of being lost forever within dreams. And and like the main character in the movie wanting to come home. But then, you know, the notion that wow, even even the thing I think is home is also a dream. So there can it's like this infinite regress. It's like, oh, there's another one, another layer, another this. And it can, it can all be very exhausting, especially when we try to really, you know, see through it all and come home. Because we think we're away from home anyway. That is that is the dream. The dream that I'm not home. The dream that I'm away from the, soar, the source, away from what I am. That I've wandered into this sort of this other world that I have to sort of do something about. But the, the beautiful thing about it is no matter how many little pockets we inhabit, you know, how many <laughs> how many steps we take into the dream, there's still a constant that allows for the whole thing, which I would call the love of being itself, the love of the one. And that permeates into it no matter how far gone we seem to be. I remember in my in my worst moments you know there there would be this sense that there's some kind of loving presence sort of like just it, it felt kind of like just behind my head or something or just 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 right right here <laughs> somehow you know as I was despairing and even as I was thinking about killing myself or something you know when it got to that point there was still a sense that, wow, this is, this is somehow a dream, and that love is right here. <laughs> you know, there would be this glimmering of that coming through into the nightmare. Because at that point it wasn't just, just a dream, it was a real, a real nightmarish sort of existence that didn't have any, uh, you know, I didn't really have any hope. And sometimes I would have hope that it would get better, but that would just be part of the dream too. Hoping that it'll all work out in the end. And then changing the dream so that it's all good. That's another part of it. Going deeper into the dream and changing the landscape a little bit. You know, move this here, move that there. Make it all better, or make it a little better. And then find out, wow, it's still not real. <laughs> the, the unconditional love that I sort of intuit is there. I can't seem to get to it from within my dream <laughs> because the dream is all about movement and and fighting something and accomplishing things and personal endeavor and gaining and losing and not really knowing not really being not knowing being not just being able to to know the love that we look for within the dream so that, that's, that's sort of the invitation, is that no matter how far gone we think we are within the dream, we can always notice love, we can always rest, and just be in that love somehow. You know, it's, and, and how do I do that, right? That's, that's the dream. How do I do it? How do I just rest in love? How do I recognize that love is all around me and within me and permeating the entire manifestation? It's kind of like in Inception, there was that song that they would play to sort of like wake them up or something or um, get them out of the dream. It's sort of like this soft permeation and it goes through all the layers. It doesn't matter how many layers there are, how complex the dream is. There's this sort of song of love that just goes, you know, it just sort of drifts into that consciousness, no matter how entangled it is. And, you know, the characters stop. Oh, do you hear that? Yeah. It's like... It, you stop investing in the dream and you hear that song that, that comes from reality reality itself. But, you know, even that... Even even that can just be a dream. So it's, it's all just a total metaphor. I mean, love as an actuality is real love as our concepts, our dream, our dream stuff as well. You know, thinking about love and looking for it and, 
you know, wanting it as though we want a car <laughs> or spiritual goals or something. You know, that that's that takes place in a dream as well. Even enlightenment. Even the most seemingly high and mighty ultimate type concepts take place in thinking. And so they don't have any real ground you know, any ground to stand on because <laughs> they're they're plugging into something that is not original to us. You know, it's it's not a an actual reality that stands alone of itself. See that phone is like it's like trying to invade my dream or something. Yeah, it's it's kind of like that. L love is like ringing in the background, you know, softly, not as irritatingly as that phone, but there's sort of a sense of this it's like a gentle reminder kind of and it, and it seems like it's off to the side like it's in the background somewhere it's not it doesn't seem so obvious to us when we're you know deeply immersed in our dream or our dream within dream within dream and yet it's it's always it's always so it's like I look it's a, it's like I turn it's kind of like that you turn your head and oh you get a little glimmer of it it's like in the peripheral, somehow, it seems. But the more we recognize it and just rest with it and just let it, let it come in. It's like the sun, you know, the... It, people don't notice the sun all the time. But then you look, oh yeah, you kind of turn and you, get, you catch the glint of the sunlight. Oh yeah, the sun's burning, still. It's still there. And it's that constant radiance, it's, it's like that. And we don't even notice it. It's like a fish not believing in water. That's kind of what it is when we're when we're looking for God and doubting, you know, doubting the existence of the divine reality. You know, wondering if it's actually real. Is this true, or is is that just another dream? And what's this all about? It's like we're swimming in it. We're we're permeated in it at all times. <laughs> And then we're kind of wondering about it, you know. Is this water? I don't know, I, I can drink it, but is it water? I, I'm swimming in it, I'm being sustained by it. But is it water? Is this real? I don't know. What do you think? Yet, the, you know, the fish is asking the guru fish about water. So, you know, they're both permeated by it and, you know, most of their body is composed of it. and. It's it's like the only reality there is really. It's like, hey, Mr. Guru Fish, are, are we in water? And he's like, yes, you are in water. And if you practice enough, <laughs> you know, maybe you can you, you can live in it in the way I do or something. You know, it, it's it's just it's so it's so global and so equal. It doesn't matter what our what our individual dream is, what our condition is. It's just, it's it's so readily available and so intimate and, and obvious in that way that it's just sort of, it's just sort of here. It's just right here. And how do we, how do we look, you see, how, right? How do I, how do I quite notice it? You know, if I drop, if I drop this concept, you know, the, the concept that seems to be believable right now, What's left? Huh. It's a funny one, right? It's kind of a funny thing because it's so obvious. And so we laugh, it's, it prompts sort of a, it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> it's just so obviously home that we wonder what we were doing in the dream. You know, we, we have to wonder, what was I doing? <laughs> who, who was I trying to be this whole time? When the song of the divine is so constant, just calling us back to itself. You know, what's so important about my dream that I can't just take a moment and listen to that, that silent, loving ordinariness, the naturalness of it. Anyway, it's kind of all over the place, but love is 
also all over the place. So whatever place you happen to be, that's where love will meet you. Anyway, have a great now, as my one teacher used to say, and all the best.